To build a fireproof safe, I'm gonna do a double wall. That space between the two walls is critical for insulating temperatures, both hot and cold, and things like your coffee cup, double glazed windows, and coolers. I'm gonna start by cutting out and welding together the outer shell. I think it's gonna be quicker just to do it by hand. So I'm gonna grab the plasma and, and start cutting. I left some half inch breaks in the cut, so I could fold the sides up into place, which makes it a lot easier to tack together and stay square. Once I had the box stacked together, I will install all the seams. The inner shell is recessed in an inch, and I went ahead and cut this on the CNC table. This one I welded the seams from the inside, since that's what you'll see on the inside of the safe. I welded together an oversized face frame that will connect the two shells, and cut it to size on the CNC table so it'd be perfectly square. Got the inner shell and the outer shell all welded up. The one inch gap between them, I'm gonna fill with some ceramic fiber blanket, which can really withstand really high temperatures. It's what's used in kilns a lot. And I think it'll be perfect for insulating this from fire. Welded on some studs to help hold the ceramic material in place. I didn't want it sloughing down on the inside once the two halves were slid together. It was a snug fit, but I got them together and I welded all the seams. I cut the face of the door out of 3 16 inch plate. I decided to just use 3 quarter inch shaft collars as bushings on this project. They're cheap, weldable, and should do the trick. I welded one on the inside of the door, where the shaft of the handle will slide through. I also welded on some standoffs and a frame around the perimeter of the door, before installing insulation and welding on the back side of the door. I plug welded the back side of the door to the standoffs, and then TIG welded the perimeter seams and ground it smooth.
put together a jam from square tubing. I slipped the door in place and rolled it on some hinges. Now it's time to figure out the locking mechanism. But before I get to that, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Ariat. When I was younger, I didn't put much thought into the clothes I wore here on the farm. I mean, it's all getting dirty and stained anyways, right? Ariat's helped me realize how nice it is to wear work clothing that protects you in the job, is breathable and doesn't inhibit your movement while you work, and looks nice to boot. I have to admit, it just makes you feel good while you work to wear clothes that you're proud of which makes it all that much easier to do work that you're proud of. I can't say enough good things about Ariat Rebar Relax Fit Jeans. They're all I wear now. Ariat boots are comfortable right out of the box and protect your feet all day. Ariat is a great place to go for holiday gift ideas for both him and her. It's the consistently high standard of all Ariat's products that make me proud to work with them. Click the links in the description to see my favorite Ariat products and save 10% off your first order, just in time for your holiday shopping. I want to thank Ariat for sponsoring this video, and I hope you'll check them out. Thanks, Ariat. Alright, I got the safe and the safe door done. Now I'm moving on to figuring out the locking mechanism. What I'm thinking is that I'm going to have a big handle in the front that I can turn, and that'll retract and extend four pins on the top and bottom that'll lock into the, the jam here and really secure the door. And then to disengage and engage the handle, I bought a combo lock with a small pin that comes out. You know, just slide it into a little slot that'll keep the handle from spinning. So I think I got it all figured out. I'm gonna start cutting. Brackets I'm cutting out of half inch plate. I'm making the thickness of the locking mechanism compartment to match the thickness of two shaft collars and the half inch plate. So the brackets will stay centered within it on their own. I chamfered the inside of the bracket and clamped it down to some shaft collars so it would be set perpendicular to the shaft and welded it. Then I cleaned up the weld so it still spins inside the shaft collar. And then cut both sides of the shaft flush with the outside of the collar. The handle I found at the scrapyard and I thought it would look pretty cool in the safe. I cleaned it up with the wire brush. I drilled and tapped holes for the faceplate and dowel of the lock. And did the same on the inside. Making the pins out of one inch round bar, 
which I cut to length in the bandsaw. I needed to notch the end to match the half inch brackets. And I drilled a bolt hole in each. I needed one more bracket for each pin, which I cut out of a piece of angle I had got set up in the CNC table. I got all the pins set at the furthest out that I want them to stick out from the sides. And so now I can start measuring and cutting all the linkages and tie them together. Can't quite get enough rotation. I'm gonna have to redesign this linkage. The one over here is fine though. There we go. That works quite a bit smoother than I was even hoping for. I cut a backing plate. I set a couple holes located on each shaft collar so I can tack them to the backing plate in place to make sure they're where they need to be. I had drilled small holes in each pin of the linkages for cotter pins in the back side but realized that with the backing plate bolted in place they couldn't slide out anyways so no need for the cotter pins. With the backing plate on the table, I could put a stronger weld on each bushing. I took everything apart one last time and cleaned everything up. I put a little grease on all the pivot points, which along with having the opposite side shaft collar welded in place, really made everything work smoothly. The last thing I have to do is to figure out where I'm gonna drill the holes for the bolts here. And it's something that's been on my mind the entire project because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. It has to be really precise for the door to be a tight fit. I think what I'm going to do, at least what I'm going to try first, is to uh, put a piece of masking tape, or at least a couple of pieces of masking tape, stack it up a little bit, and then close the door and try slamming it to see if the, the bolts will leave a, a mark on the masking tape. 
and that will give me a, a location to start for when I when I drill those out. Kind of worked. Once I had all four holes drilled, along with a little fine tuning with the tie grinder, I can now lock up and secure all my most precious valuables.